We've got some hey, I'm Luis. And I'm Luis. And you're listening to the Content is Profit podcast. We spent the last four years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the top marketers in the world on how to create content that turns into profit. And today, we're bringing them to you so you can take action immediately and start creating real content momentum. If you'd like to learn more about how to turn your content into profit, go to contentisprofit.com. Oh. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Guys, today from the hospitality industry MVP to full online reinvention. Oh, was that good? That was the first time that you read that? <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And uh, I, I think today's guest, he has been such an inspiration for us too. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and I hope he does that for you in the audience as well. So, uh, with that being said, guys, please go ahead and subscribe. Hit smash that subscribe button uh, so you know when the episodes come out. You know, like we're live almost every single day, but uh, you'll get them right on your phone. And uh, if you want to follow us on social media, feel free at BizBrosco on uh, Facebook and Instagram. That's right, guys. And if you find this episode impactful, which I am 100% sure you will because it's an amazing story, make sure to share with everybody else and, and leave a five-star review. All right. Snap, snap, snap. Brown left, spring forward, back pedal, kneel, get back up, spring back. No, we're not leading a workout here. This is what today's guest was doing when we first met him. His weapon of choice, a camera. Today's guest has worked with some of the biggest names in the ClickFunnels market. He's one of the coolest people you'll ever meet, and he knows how to rock a scarf. Guys, talk about, about differentiating yourself. He's one classy dude. Just check his YouTube channel, his website, and you'll notice it. His superpower is to inspire, motivate, and educate others. Although he looks like a young fella, he's a 10-year veteran of the hospitality industry, including a director of the year. Not to mention that he has owned and operated a successful event photography studio for 14 years. Now Ooh. that's impressive. That is very impressive, guys. Please welcome proud husband and father, super successful photographer, and proud Jeep owner, Mr. <laughs> John Mamoni. Yay. What's welcome, up, guys? Welcome. What's up? I don't even know about that lead-in. That was probably the best lead-in I've had uh, ever, I think. How you doing? <laughs> Pretty good. How are you, Don? We are so excited to have you here at Content This Profit. Thanks, man. I uh, I'm, I'm humbled and honored uh, I've, to share this stage with some of the people that you've already interviewed. It's it's really it's truly my mind is blown. So thanks for having me here. Of course, yeah, man. Of course. Uh, again, like we said, it's truly really an honor, and you have been such a big inspiration in the last couple of months. Uh, they have not been easy months. And uh, you put in that there's a way, and uh, we're going to chat a little bit more about it in just a couple minutes. Yeah, definitely. Sure. Before we start, though, a little fun fact. <laughs> I actually now, you know, reading the intro, I'm like, wow, that's actually not the first time we saw Don. You remember what, the first time we saw him? Offer oh, mine. No. No? We, we were actually oh, okay. in the plane and going <laughs> to offer mine and we saw Last you September, yes. and, and your wife, Emily, right in front of us, and we were like, <laughs> I wonder if they're going to the event because you guys had like what a click funnels, um, mm -hmm. together, taking notes. I was like, yeah, they're probably going to the event. Next, next thing we know, you guys are the photographers, That's you right. know, crush it. That's like ah. the plane, uh, from Texas, actually. Yeah, so yeah, like, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we, we swag it up when we go to events for Russell, for Steven, for all those folks because you know, we want to we want to be part of the community. I love, yeah. it. I love it. That's awesome. Um, all right, Don. So, why don't you share a little bit with uh, with the audience, right? Like, where uh, uh, we share a little bit in the intro about you yep. know what you did, what you still do. I'm not sure, and we're going to discover that in a second. But why don't you share, you know, that past experience? Like, what are you doing now, and where are you going? Man, that is. Uh, I should ask myself that question because that's. I think that's what I'm doing almost every day. Um, you know, I started in hospitality in 1999. Uh, I'm and dating myself. I'm showing my age now, but uh, I started with Hilton <laughs> Hotels back then, and I was the the director of the corporate events department. In in it was an awesome environment in which to exist because your whole job, your whole responsibility is is taking the group sales, um, and you're servicing 
conferences uh, uh, from 50 to 5,000. And um, I did that for eight years and I'll be perfectly candid. And, and this is not something I'm ashamed of. I burned out. Um, that is the type of job where you're in first out last grinding it out seven days a week, a lot of the times. And it just got to a point where I was like, man, I'm, I'm approaching my thirties. Um, I don't know that this is something I'm going to want to do for the rest of my life. And so I transitioned and that's how I ended up in Dallas, man. I, I took a job at the oh. corporate office and, uh, I tell this anecdote because it's so important how the universe leads you. Uh, I took a job at Hilton's corporate office and it was Monday through Friday, largely nine to five. It involved a ton of travel. And what it, what it meant was with all this extra time I had not working these longer hours, I decided to pick up my camera again, which was a passion I had from way back in high school. It was just a hobby, something I really loved to do. And in two years, I suck got so into it. I just really, it, it kind of grabbed a hold of me again. I was like, I'm never happier than when I'm working with my camera. And uh, flash forward two years after I moved to Dallas and I was a full-time photographer. So wow. that was my that was my big first transition. I thought I was gonna be in hospitality for, you know, just kind of working your way up the company ladder, but it just I was so much happier with a camera in my hand that I knew that that's what I needed to do. I, yeah. I love it. A lot of people I feel struggle with finding their passion, right? And uh, maybe sometimes they're like, okay, I need to find a passion, right? So mm -hmm. it feels like we all need a passion, right? And uh, I I believe that maybe we don't need a passion. It does help a ton, mm -hmm. but how do you find your passion in the camera was this by accident was this like something that you were doing as a hobby was this something that you know you were planning on doing that's man that's a great question so uh first time i ever picked up a camera was in high school a friend of mine's father gave him a camera he took a, a photography class and he was like yeah it was cool and i said well let me, if you don't mind i'll borrow the camera i'll take a class and i took the class and i loved it but it was just a high school class it was just a little bit of fun i did the same thing in college it it never seemed like a, a business I think is what it boils down to. It was a hobby. It was a passion. It was something I had fun doing. Um, but it wasn't until I hit a sort of milestone in my life where I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. What do I want to do? Where And that's when the, the sort of passion, the idea of this hobby became, why don't I try to make a business of this? Uh, mm -hmm. And that's when I started to say, how do you make money with a camera? Uh, yeah. And I, I love the idea that I was creating art because I'll be perfectly candid. I'm not much of an artist. Uh, my wife, you know, Emily, she is like yeah. an artist to the core. She loves to play music. She can paint, she can draw, she can uh, obviously make beautiful mm -hmm. art with her camera. So it was a way for me to indulge the artistic side of me in sort of a technical manner. And, uh, yeah. and it just, it basically got to a point that after a number of years of basically doing a job that I loved and it transitioning a job that I did and then transitioning to a job that I didn't really love anymore. I really wanted to try to find something that I knew would sustain. I knew it was something I was going to want to do sort of into perpetuity. And that's, that's where the, the love of what I did and what I wanted to do to make money kind of, kind of came together. Yeah, that, that is pretty cool. You know, and something I, I would like the people that are listening to this takeaway is kind of like the, that struggle of letting go sometimes, you know, I mean, you said you thought you were going to be in the hospitality industry for, you know, forever. And a lot of us, you know, we go out of college thinking, oh, yeah, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Or uh, we go studying into something and we're like, I have to do this no matter what. And then we are so committed into it that we have a very difficult time of letting go and saying, you know what, maybe there's a better option out there that doesn't involve burnout, for example. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, it, like my brother said, it's, it, it's difficult for people to actually let go of that feeling what, what do you think it is uh, I know, I, i'm thinking around maybe it's people people will be like disappointed of themselves if they mm -hmm. let like go like hey i've been putting so much work into this what do you think it is i think you're i think you're spot on i think uh humans are their own worst critic by definition and by nature we obviously give latitude a lot of the time and and sort of um forgiveness or freedom to other people but to ourselves we were our own worst critic and we feel like we've either failed or we haven't tried hard enough um, you know, I made essentially the cog, like the, the, the choice to leave the industry that, that I had been doing. And you have to accept that sometimes that's because it wasn't what you thought it was going to be, uh, the, 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 you were able to do it for as long as you had been doing it. And even though you thought you'd do it for longer, maybe you were wrong then and not so much wrong now. So I think, I think you're spot on. You just have to accept the fact that, um, we only know what we know based on the situation we're in right now. 
when I started the job, I loved it. I loved everything about it. And I loved the, the hotel I was at. I loved the people I worked with. And as things changed, you know, those variables change and you, you just have to be true to yourself and true to your heart and know um, that it'll work out. Um, and, and I think that's the other thing, uh, you two, is that people think um, they think the worst or they let the fear get a hold of them. I mean, there's, there's nothing comfortable about sort of uprooting your existence and saying, I'm going to change something. Um, yeah. and, and sometimes you get a little shove from the universe by, you know, what we're going through right now or, um, yeah. a family change, you know, you decide you're having a kid. Sometimes the universe does it. Other times you just have to sort of have the strength and the courage to, to make the change yourself. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree. You know, I mean, and I think we've heard it plenty of times that is kind of like fear is actually the, the indicator of, of growth. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously depends on the fear no we're not talking if you're like in front of a bear then you know <laughs> different circumstances. you're gonna yeah you're gonna put yourself physically very hard at that point in time, yeah, yeah but like in that you know like kind of like that diameter of the comfort the comfort zone when you're like right at the edge when you're like exploring into uncharted territories that you're about to you know experience growth mm -hmm. I, I think there's always fear i think that diameter is called fear actually you know and like you just for me before us we had to let go of the idea of playing professional soccer right we grew up that was our dream that's all we did we just practiced soccer we came to the states because of soccer when it didn't happen i mean that that was like a mandatory change because we couldn't pursue it anymore or it was like yeah. oh wow like, i mean it, i'm scared what do we do now but we we have no other choice than to take action and search for something else right mm -hmm. and i mean I think that's how we fall in love with, at least that's how I fall in love in with entrepreneurship um, and like trying to build something. I think that is not the coolest thing ever, you know? Well, and yeah, you, I, you, I, I, 100%. when you use the word fear, it's interesting because you can look at fear from two different uh, angles, obviously, right? Fear can be something that holds you back, but fear can also yeah. be an unbelievable motivator, you know? Um, mm -hmm. When I left yeah. hospitality, it, it essentially was, uh, I was presented with a choice. The project I was on was ending and I could either go back to hotels or I needed to um, to sort of separate employment. And uh, I remember having the conversation with Emily. I said, you know, I don't know what it's like to not have a nine to five Monday through Friday or, or whatever type of job you have where you get a paycheck every two weeks. She had largely been self-employed and a motivated entrepreneur her whole life. And she's like, you just, you make it work, you make it happen. You have a lot of faith and belief and you work really hard. And uh, so yeah. I said, I said, I can't imagine going back into hotels and working those hours now that I've had a taste of doing what I love so much. And the fear yeah. of not succeeding was far more powerful than the fear of not having a paycheck. I was like, okay, fine, I'll give up the paycheck. And the fear mm -hmm. of just basically not hustling enough to make it work was, was yeah. the motivator rather than something that was the limiter. Oh man, I love that because I, I feel like I feel like I commented this to my brother a few times. <laughs> that is, I mean, I, I never quite had the nine to five, but you know, but like I, I was a waiter and we had this job where we coached little kids two to six years old, uh, how to play soccer. And I remember telling my brother once after this finally started working out, right? I was like, man, I don't think I could ever go back. You know, like mm -hmm. even if I was like in need so bad, I'm like, I can't, I, I feel like I will be taking a step backwards, you know, I was like, no, I just want to move forward. Except even if it, it work, yeah. yeah, even if it like looks tough, right. Mm -hmm. For us. And it doesn't matter. Like I'm going to try. Right. And, and again, we're building, I feel like while building the business, we have built a skill of acquiring customers, which is probably one of the greatest skills people can ever have. Right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Yeah, like I really so much of the story. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I agree 100. percent I think like in this like journey of entrepreneurship, content creation, right? Because when you start talking about content as a vehicle to you know grow your business, right? Mm -hmm. uh, start putting yourself out there, and it's not easy. And then you embark in this self de development like crazy trip <laughs> that you're like, what? What am I even saying? Like, who is this person I'm talking about? And that's yourself. And you're like, what? I thought I really knew myself. And you really didn't. And then uh, it's like this whole crisis of, like, okay, you know, I need to actually develop myself and level up big time to make things happen, right? Do you ever experience, I mean, th going through that transition into like going into this entrepreneurial and uh, uh, probably now this new phase that we haven't gotten to yet. Mm -hmm. uh, have you experienced 
something like that. And then if you did, like, what are some of the things that you do to overcome, I guess, I don't, I don't want to say fear, but like to, to overcome those, like maybe false beliefs that you already have. Sure. Uh, into moving into a new you. Yeah, man. So, um, when Emily and I first started, we served the social community a lot. So, um, one of my good friends and, and mentors was a wedding photographer. And so when I was talking to them about, you know, how do you make money with your camera? You know, there's, there's weddings, there's sports, there's fashion and things like that. And I think because he and a lot of his, uh, circle and a lot of the people that I knew through him were doing weddings and I, I, I am sort of a hopeless romantic. I do like the hearts and the flowers. I was like, okay, this will be a good fit for me. I'm going to go ahead and, and give this a shot. Um, I took to it really, really well. I really enjoyed it, but, and this is a huge, however, it's a very saturated marketplace, right? <laughs> and, and in the world of photography, DJ, a lot of the um, creative things, there's very low barrier to entry, right? And so you asked me a really good question. The thing that I feared the most or the obstacle that I had to get over was that there was going to be enough business for me, that we were going to able to, as you said, acquire a customer right? And, and do enough so that we were talking about, we needed to support ourselves. And ultimately we wanted to have kids probably. So we were going to need to support a family. So the yeah. biggest thing was trying to find the way where you could say, how do we make sure that when we enter this marketplace, that's already kind of saturated with other professionals that do what we do, how do you make yourself a differentiated, unique prospect that the person says, this is, this is who we want to hire. And, uh, you know, you guys know me well enough to know, you know, my heart, you know, my humility. I have a lot of trouble being an attractive character. And although I don't have a problem being in the spotlight chatting with you guys, I could talk up on stage. I don't like being the center of attention, but I'm gonna tell you guys yeah. some things that I feel were really pivotal for Emily and I in our growth. One of the things that we decided we wanted to be able to say was anytime somebody was talking about something that we were going to document, we wanted them to know that they don't need a photographer. They need the Mamonis mm. because there's a million photographers. You can go, go out and, and look in the marketplace yeah. and you'll find lots of talented photographers, but there's only one, the Mamonis. And, and these are the reasons why you want to seek us out specifically. And that was one yeah. of the big things, right? When we identified how do you deal in a marketplace that's saturated, you remove yourself in a sense from that group of people and you sort of try to elevate yourself to a new place so that people then say, we don't need a photographer. We need them. So that was the, that was probably the first and biggest. It wasn't the only that's for sure, but it was one of the first and yeah. one of the biggest. That, that, that's really cool. I mean, first I, I did some wedding photography too, so <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm not going to lie. I was not the biggest fan of wedding <laughs> photography, but the fun stage but yeah no, i mean it's you get to know some really cool people as well which is it's sure i think that's one of the biggest benefits of, of the photography business to be honest but what i love about this story man is how you guys you know kind of like they don't need a photographer but they need the mamonis mm -hmm. um it just reminds me of, of the category king right like yeah. you guys being the category king of your space mm -hmm. um that even <laughs> we're actually watching this video yesterday <laughs> and this kid was a like, raffling a samsung oh, yeah. tablet but he was like oh yeah i'm raffling a samsung ipad no the, the ipad of the samsung yeah, and, and we so were good. like talk about category king right that he's just like even referring as a tablet as ipads already yeah. And, yeah. and even relating that concept uh don that we've taught right the unique mm -hmm. mechanism right as a photographer like the unique mechanism is you and and, and emily is the, the mamonis is your team right and mm -hmm. people are like mm, what's that like now you can establish a conversation so let this be a lesson for those listening and watching on how to separate yourself from that massive pack right yeah and mm -hmm. that so thank you for that amazing lesson because yeah. uh we actually struggled with that for a long long time and still trying to find the, the right message right and it's like through this type of content that we've been able to do it so yeah. thank you for bringing it to so easy terms to sure on yeah I mean, i'm pretty curious you know about emily and you right? like how's that dynamic you know from start to 14 years later yeah uh, i mean it's a long time you know like oh, sure if I had this guy right here for 14 years next to me, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. You know? so, <laughs> uh, it's, somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's not for everyone. Um, we're very fortunate uh, for a number of different reasons. Uh, Emily and I excel in, in similar ways, but in very different um, projects. And so uh, yeah. one of my favorite examples was, you know, we were operating photographers before we met. 
um, we, we came together, we started chatting. She was doing more ca uh, like commercial and fashion work. I was doing more events and weddings. And uh, she, she learned a lot of her uh, abilities as a photographer by being a model. And that's a very unique uh, thing. Most people that are photographers haven't been a muse or a subject like she was. And so yeah. she brought a, a wealth of knowledge regarding being the person on the other side of the camera, which for me, I'm awkward. I don't like to be photographed particularly. I'm very insecure about that. So uh, my anecdote there is I said, you know, I've got a bridal session for this bride that I'm photographing in a couple of weeks. What would you like to come along and, and we can uh, photograph together or whatever. And, and don't get me wrong. I feel like I did a nice job. My clients were always happy. But when she came on that first session with me, first one, I watched her communicate with the bride talk to the bride about her anatomy, the way to hold herself, the way to position herself, the way she used light because of her knowledge as a muse and as a subject. I just looked at her, I was like, okay, so you're gonna have to do this from now on because you basically <laughs> you basically have just shattered my my thought that this is, that I'm, I thought I was doing okay, but you're obviously this is your skill set. you crush it. So yeah. um, in our business, it became very obvious where I would oftentimes uh, host certain businesses in my arena and she would do the other businesses in hers. Uh, when it came to corporate, we we just aligned really well. We projected really well. So uh, our dynamic has always been strong for that reason. I think that we stayed in our strength buckets. Um, we, we like to rely on each other. There's not a lot of, the only competitive nature in us is that we sort of uh, iron sharpens iron. We level each other up all the time. We drive each other mm -hmm. to do better, be more artistic. Uh, so it's, it's been really, it's been 14 great years, man. There's, there's not a lot of downside to that. Yeah, that dude, that, that's awesome. And I, I'm getting something from this story that I want people to take away, like besides the, the chemistry, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like my brother and I, for example, we had a moment where we were, we actually took a, a look at each other here across the desk and we were like, dude, you know what? There's two of us. <laughs> yeah. We're doing exactly the same thing. Like mm -hmm. we're not playing to our strength, right? And that's what mm -hmm. you what you're talking about with Emily that you you identify pretty quickly, mm -hmm. and and then was like, okay, you know what? Like she's elevating, you know, my game. I'm elevating her game, right? It, it's a win-win situation, and honestly, I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but like it maybe would have taken you way longer to come to that realization if she wasn't wasn't there right and i think that's key when it comes to getting people outside of the circle whether mm -hmm. it is your job or your industry even because mm -hmm. sometimes we think we know everything sometimes right we're like yeah this is our operator this is how we do things and then someone comes along with this little piece of knowledge this little something different that they have and it's like wow it so i shatters yeah what you just, thought it was yeah right you're, thing. yeah and like Oh, so that's how we can do it even better, right? Well, and I, I just find that so interesting. So, sorry, don't. No, that's fine. It's, it's super interesting that you say that because here's the deal. When you're an entrepreneur, business owner, um, you, you thrive on confidence. You thrive mm -hmm. on your ability to, to work through, push through, make it happen, all those types of things, which can sometimes, I think, leave you um, in a position where you, you feel vulnerability or a willingness to sort of let other people in, uh, you feel like that's a weakness, right? And uh, mm -hmm. I can't even count on one hand. Let's say, um, you know, the busier we got and, and the more successful we got, we say with, again, humility and, and, and gratitude. Emily and I were oftentimes off photographing in different places. And, um, mm -hmm. and that was great because dividing and conquering meant, again, growing the brand, growing business. We brought on three, three, two or three other photographers. But... Um, we were so comfortable allowing uh, and accepting that, that that other person had a valid uh, advice, thought, uh, seeing things from a different angle. I would be on a project and I'd know that she was uh, off and I'd say, hey, uh, can you FaceTime with me real quick? I have a question for you. And we'd look at the scene and we'd talk about lighting. I'd talk about, you know, creative portrait. You know, maybe it was of Russell backstage. I'm like, hey, I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to do a, a quick creative portrait of Russell next time he comes backstage. What do you think about this or that? And and if you're not willing to let that in, then it definitely will will yeah. will hamper your growth. And I, I'm not even saying that's an, uh, as a negative thing. It, it's almost like you're not allowed to do that because if you do, then then you sort of your, your confidence wanes. And, and being an entrepreneur, it's all about 
knowing that you can and knowing that you can improve and knowing you can do better. But um, there's something to be said for finding that group of people from the outside. It it's could be a spouse, partner, business partner, preferred professional, somebody that you've got on Voxer that you just appreciate their opinion and reach out to them and let them know like, hey, I'm really trying to, to push myself here and, and take that in because you guys make a great point. It's easy to get to get caught up and not to listen to that and not to grow as fast as you could. Yeah. I, I, I loved every second of that story too. And I think I want to highlight a point that I think it like it, it went under the radar for a second. Uh, and is the fact of only having experience if what on on the on being the subject, right? On the photography scene, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes as business owners or even content creators, right? We don't put ourselves in the situation to feel the pain, to feel like what it's like to be on the other side, right? And mm -hmm. then if we start like teaching or or even selling, like something that we haven't really experienced as a client, sometimes we might say things that don't relate to our dream customer. And, you know, bringing it back to the entrepreneurship, to the sales side, to the content side, I feel like what she did there, it, it happened very, it looks like it happened very organically, but it has such a big value to what your business is mm -hmm. because now she has that unique point of view. But I think is what happened. We're like, okay, you know, we want to, um, with our story when we started to publish, like we were going out selling content, we knew all the technical sides, we knew all the edition side, like all the amazing things that, you know, you could do as a content creator or producer, right? We knew that, but we weren't producing content at the time. So the report like completely went down and we we're like, okay, we need to be in the position there so we can speak properly we need to know what it is and i think a lot of business owners or entrepreneurs miss that point so i encourage everybody listening that if you haven't been in that position go experience it for a second right and if you're creating content or if you you know go and try to be a client and then talk about those experiences because i think that's such an important thing because i think one of, that's one of the biggest elements that we were able to like put our mind around and execute and it got us so much further. And, uh, you know, with Emily and you, it happened very organically. But it, we don't have to wait for it to happen organically. Go put yourself in that position and, uh, and level up like you guys did, which is amazing. So I just wanted to highlight that because I think it flew like under the radar. And yeah. for us, that was such a big, uh, such a big moment. We started to, you know, I like to say drink from, from your own Kool-Aid, right? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. It's... Uh... I mean, it was uh, yeah, definitely a transitional transitional. Is that a, even a word? Uh, <laughs> moment, a pivotal moment pivotal for moment. Uh, yeah. for us, right? And I want to transition. Talking about transitions uh, transition here a little bit transition. because you talk about okay, being in the hospitality business and you know burning out, and then that leading to moving on into the photography business. Mm -hmm. But now, right, like a few months ago when Corona hit, right, like. Yeah you were pretty much forced to pivot in a, in a whole different way, mm -hmm. right? Maybe not, not willingly, but I mean, the business was probably impacted because of, you know, you guys are sure. going to the coolest events and photographing the coolest people and getting to know some, some awesome people. But, I, you know, I'm, I'm curious about the contrast between that change mm -hmm. willingly and now this change that is more forceful if you can put it in a way yeah so uh it's interesting i um i love photography and i i love it um because it is it allows me to stretch the the artistic muscle um but there's one thing i learned in, in the 14 years of running a studio okay um believe it or not i'm a photographer second i'm a servant first um and and one of the ways that i found that was the, the more Emily and I photograph, and Emily's very similar in, in that regard, the more we photographed, when we very first started, we got a fair amount of feedback and, and we would always send out surveys and we'd inquire about our clients, how were they happy? Um, and, and a lot of the testimonials talked about, about the art, especially when you're talking about weddings. But as we transitioned into corporate uh, America and we started doing more and more corporate events, the feedback we got was about the experience we created just as much, if not more, than the portfolio of photography we would send. Okay. Wow. And that was this, this sort of enlightening moment where I realized I'm a servant first, right? I was, I was in the hospitality industry, which basically means you bend over backwards to ensure that that customer is, is, is you're exceeding their expectations, you're being proactive, not reactive, all those things. 
And so basically I took what I was doing in hotels and in hospitality and I applied it to a business. And instead of delivering a service, I was delivering uh, a service and a product of photography. Yeah. So I think it was about five years ago, uh, I had some people saying like, Hey, I have a question for you, you know, in your business, this, in your business, that. And so I started giving out advice just, just based on people asking me questions. And yeah. I said, Emily, I said, Emily, I, I really like this. I like the idea. I like this feeling of being a servant to these people because you're not giving a man a fish. You're teaching him how to fish. They're coming to me and they're saying, Hey, I need, I need somebody to help me make sure that this effort is going to be a success. And the effort you're talking about is typically them building and running a business. That's going to be their livelihood. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to start this up. And I started like a little website and I did all this little stuff. And then, uh, three and a half, or I guess now, I guess it would have been four and a half glorious years ago. My wife came out and said, I think we're pregnant. <laughs> and like I said, the life, the universe kind of tells you certain things. And, and the, at that yeah. time, the universe was like, slow your roll, buddy. You just focus on the business. <laughs> you're running, and and yeah. you're, about to, you're about to be a dad, which was obviously the, the biggest and best thing that's ever happened to me. But uh, yeah. it was about, it was about a year ago. And yeah, I think you guys will like this anecdote because uh, it goes to the talk about like failing faster and just doing yeah. something. It was March, exactly a year ago. Um, I had photographed an event, I think it was for Russell. And then I went back to my, it, it actually was 10X. It was Russell speaking at 10X. And then I had to go back to Miami uh, a little while later for another client. And while I was there, I was like, forget it. I'm just gonna do it. I pressed live on my phone. I went live on <laughs> Facebook and I talked about how I was launching something new. That's and awesome. I, gave, I gave myself five days. I did a five-day countdown. I'm so excited to share this all with you. And uh, for five days, I kind of restructured and built a little website and got everything going. The only problem was I hadn't given enough critical thought to my content, to my message, mm. to what I was actually trying to do. And here was the lesson I learned. I got ahead of my skis. I basically had this countdown that the events industry was watching and they were super excited about it. I was getting all the support, but it was a countdown to a whole lot of not enough. It didn't deliver yeah. on the promise. And so I got over my skis and man, did I feel terrible about it? And I beat myself up about it. And people were like, uh, really excited for you, which was the lesson I learned that was so exciting was there was probably about 150 people that signed up and said, I don't know what you're doing, but I'm in. And that was just such a cool feeling, such yeah. a cool feeling. But then at the same time, I gave myself a hard time. So fast forward to, to 2020, here we are. Um, I had been putting the ball in, in play and putting it into motion. But yeah. as of uh, second week of March, the uh, constriction, let's say, of the events industry uh, basically brought a close to, to at least the operation of photography in the event space. Yeah. Um, our business yeah. is still here. We still can't wait to serve clients that need our photography, but at the moment there's just, there's no need for it. So I've put 110% into something that you guys know is not the easiest transition. And yeah. the, uh, the funnest part about that is, uh, I've had the time I'm trying to leverage that time. Uh, the people in this industry, man, the people in this industry are so gracious and giving of their time that uh, I was, I'm finally able to sort of like deliver on that promise from a year ago. And it's been really exciting. So um, yeah, it, uh, it's, the universe is, has, has told me what I need to be doing right now. And that's what I'm spending all my time doing. That's such a cool story. And, yeah. and, you know, looking at it from the outside, right? Because, you know, when we met you, we obviously saw your photography side, right? And then all craziness happens. And a lot of people had to pivot real quick and adapt. And, and you know, a lot of people took it better than others. Um, and I just found such a refreshing take on what you are doing because I was not expecting it. Expecting it. Maybe people that knew you and were following you for a little bit, maybe, yes. Mm -hmm. But... It's incredible how fast you've been taking action, uh, which is something that people miss. Sometimes people like overthink and then that they freeze and they don't execute and then they fail and then they blame external factors mm -hmm. of the failure. So it was very refreshing to see how fast you pivoted, how fast you were starting to execute and how fast you were putting people first for profits, which is something that message that really resonated um, I want you to kind of like dive in a little bit more on that. It obviously comes from the story that you also told earlier, but mm -hmm. how in this phase, uh, people first and then profit, uh, is helping you to move the ball 
forward and, uh, and create momentum and create results and ultimately a living from for, for you and your family? Yeah. So, um, I mean, it's not providing a living yet, um, but that's okay because yeah. I do believe in people first and profit. And so, um, basically what, what happened was, um, I engaged with an unbelievably intelligent, uh, young lady that I knew from the wedding industry. Um, her name is Maggie Francisco. She's a planner, um, originally based out of Dallas and now is in Columbus, Ohio. And she does, um, super high end destination wedding work. And what she was able to do is we started working together. She was helping me from a content strategist perspective, right? Like trying yeah. to, trying to take 14 years of uh, business experience and 10 years in hospitality swirling around in my head and, and making it into a cohesive action plan. And so yeah. um, the people first and profit is, is really just a principle that I've always lived by. But what we really have been distilling that into is the fact that um, we, I'm a relationship marketer at my core. I believe that the wealth in many ways of your business is directly a result of the business network that you put in play and, and the personal network for, for that matter. So uh, I'm trying, that's where the people first and profit comes from, right? If you take care of people, if you nurture relationships with people, if you formulate um, enduring longstanding relationships with people, the profit will come. And let me take a quick minute guys to tell you, you know, the traditional definition of profit, that's not what I'm talking about here. You know, a lot of people look at profit and they think, okay, that's earnings minus uh, expenses. That's my profit. I'm not talking about that. Yeah. I'm talking about like the sort of holistic profit for each individual, how they measure their wealth. Um, I did a yeah. talk the other day and somebody said that they, they measure their wealth in time that they get to spend with their family. And right now they're poor in wealth because they're working seven to seven, Monday through Friday, Monday through Saturday, hardly ever seeing their kids and they want to make a change. And so we're helping yeah. them make that change. So what it really boils down to is, is uh, I'm creating programs and courses in the background here. I'm hustling to try to get together um, a challenge or boot camp or masterclass or whatever you want to call it that looks at sort of the fundamental elements. I've identified four fundamental elements that it takes to run a business and uh, what happens when you're weak in one of those four fundamental elements, how you can get strong at that, how you can kind of reach uh, a place of balance and, and how that's gonna impact your world, how it's gonna drive more clients to you, allow you more free time to spend with your family or scale your business or whatever it is. So um, yeah, it's, it's a lot <laughs> as yeah, you guys know. So yeah, it's amazing. So, yeah, no, I, I love. I, I mean, and again, just honestly, congrats, man, on uh, being so proactive. I I love that. You know, man, because I, we saw so many people just fall into the the negativity. Mm -hmm. You know, with everything that was happening, and just like being reactive to everything, and then blame, putting blames and pointing fingers, whatever. And it's like. There, there are still opportunities, right? We just need to be proactive and go get them. I, I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, like make, um, how do you say, it? like least of the situation le mm -hmm. less. Like, I know there are people that are having a, a very hard time. And, like, I recognize that. But again, like, we do have a choice at the end of the day. Like, we can decide to sit down and just yeah. cry and nothing, or be like, okay, how am I going to move forward, right? How am I going to be proactive? And I, I absolutely love that from you and. And Emily, right? Like you guys are amazing. And Thanks. something that, that that you were talking about in that story is the relationship, right? Mm -hmm. We we actually have the what you were talking about wealth, right? About about profit. Mm -hmm. We call it co collateral revenue, mm -hmm. which are the, those things that etc. They they might not be measured in in dollar amounts, but they might be measured in time with your family, for example, right? Mm -hmm. For us, a huge collateral revenue that has come because of pivoting thanks to the coronavirus has been these relationships. Like mm -hmm. we didn't have a podcast before the coronavirus. And what happened is that we lost one of our biggest clients, nine locations. They called us and they were like, <laughs> you know what guys, we're closing the locations, so we don't need of your service anymore. Mm. And I mean, it was, it was tough. Yeah. I, honestly, I'm not like, I was a little bit relieved because I didn't enjoy working <laughs> with them that, that much. That talks a lot too about, you know, dream clients yeah. and all that stuff. I mm -hmm. freaked out. But my brother freaked out. I remember that <laughs> he took the call too. So after he hung up, I already knew what happened. I could feel like the energy in the room. And I turned to my brother and he's just like 
somber they're just sitting down and i was like oh no oh no so i'm like hey like it's a, it's it okay just go for a walk you know just like, just leave today that's fine and then we started talking and we're like you know what like it's an opportunity like mm -hmm. we didn't enjoy working with them right we had to convince them for us to work with us like mm -hmm. we didn't enjoy going to their places and filming and doing all this stuff we're like you know what now the time that we gain from this is actually a gain for us because now mm -hmm. we have all this time back. Yeah. Let's use it for something even better, you know, something that we've been wanting to do, which is the podcast. And that has allowed us to build amazing relationships, you know, and having and, amazing conversations like the one that we're having right now. And to make that long story short, we, it saved our business. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it, it literally saved our business and mm. it, it flipped. 180 degrees, we were able to hire team members. Uh, we're up to three time team members now. So that's what I'm saying. Like, and just like you are taking action, mm -hmm. we were able to do that too at a different environment, different level. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you are creating all that collateral revenue, all that opportunity. You're actually chasing it and creating your own reality, which is the power that a lot of people think they don't have. Yeah. Well, but by taking it's not it's Go not ahead. intuitive or easy and and i know that's not what you guys are insinuating because you guys are talking about just exactly how hard it was to build and then to have yourselves lose a client you know this idea um i'm very fortunate i am so fortunate to have been surrounded by you know russell and steven's team and making um, connections with them and speaking with them and then and then having them sort of walk alongside me in my journey. And I'm not even close to, to, to being able to say that this is a success. I feel like it's a successful effort. Um, yeah. but, but man, there is, there is, there's a million reasons why I could not be doing it. Right. Um, <laughs> there's a, there's a million reasons why I feel like, you know, even if I reflect back on our, on the way we started this conversation, right. Saturated in the marketplace, you know, you can talk yourself out of anything, but what it really boiled down to is, is at this moment, um, first of all, of course, because you just like you two being partners, you know, Emily and I started getting the phone calls in March. Hey, listen, we're so sorry, guys, but with everything going on, we have to cancel this event. We have to cancel this event. And, you know, we get it totally understand it. Uh, yeah. so she was the one who looked at me and said, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. You know, we, we kind of, we kind of propped each other up. But then after that, yeah. it's just, it's really, you, you don't, it's almost like you don't have a choice. Does that make sense? No matter how hard yeah. it is, all the reasons why I've never done a podcast. I hadn't interviewed people before. I don't know how to create a course. I don't know how to do all these different things. And I said, you know what? None of that matters because I don't have a choice, right? I, I, it's, it's almost yeah. like the, the universe is forcing you into something. And this is just my chosen, uh, outlet right now. So, um, it's, it's sort of, it's sort of nice to have that back wind pushing you along at the same time, every once in a while, I'm kind of like, I'm ready for a, a cushion instead of a, a, a push, but and that, yeah. Uh, hey, and that's okay. I mean, those are different things that come. And like you said, like the, the importance of that network, right? The people that, are, that you surround yourself with, uh, a lot of times we stop progress because we limit ourselves to the relationships that we're starting to build or we try to build. And then yeah. we start talking to the wrong people, right? The, the mm -hmm. wrong mindset, maybe. Um, and we don't un identify until later. Yeah, I, I really want to like drive home the fact of relationships right now, how important they are. Oh, man, I, I think a lot of people, and I was one of them, came into the online game thinking, oh, I'm <laughs> going to make a bunch of money sitting in my underwear in the sofa of the house without having to talk to anybody. <laughs> and yep. I'm still going to have uh, 18 hours free in the day. You know, like, dude, no, like <laughs> not at all. Right. Mm -mm. Uh, and I spent three years thinking like that. Right. Mm -hmm. And not publishing, not building relationships like I should have been doing. And honestly, it wasn't on until we actually joined other communities and we started getting ourselves out there and meeting people and talking and building these amazing relationships that our business started growing. So mm -hmm. I really, really want to like drive this point home for people. Don't, I mean, I think, yes, there are some people that manage to do that, but they might be 0 0.00001% of all the online entrepreneurs. Everybody else have to do the, their the relationship like they they are out there at the end of the day you are the average of what was the saying you're the average of the five people you hang out you hang around mm -hmm. the most uh, yeah so well I and mean, anecdotally you guys i mean let's talk about it 
uh, Emily met you two first at Offer Mind, right? So you saw us on the plane, but we didn't have a chance to interact. And then Emily saw you. And when you walked up, Emily's like, oh, this is my husband. These guys are great. You need to chat with them. <laughs> so we chatted quite a bit. And then we chat. We started to chat more and more at subsequent events. Flash forward to Funnel Hacking Live, right? 5,000 people, yet we still managed to find you and chat with you. And in that yeah. one moment, um, that night, it was, I think, the last night or the second to the last night, we were standing in the foyer with Cassie and Jorge. And, yeah. and, I, and I knew Cassie from, from before, but I'd never interacted with her. And I, I, we had taken her picture for her two comic club uh, and I, I connected with her, so I made sure she got a hold of it. And I just, I just started chatting with her right there. Like we had, we had really started to connect there. And then when you walked up, I was like, "You guys need to know these guys." And so <laughs> that's that's the the sort of six degrees of separation and the way that the exponential growth yeah. of relationships yeah. are. You know, I know that you guys have become close with them, and I think that they've been on your show once, maybe twice. They, yeah. I cherish them. They are two of the people that have been um, supportive, encouraging generous and giving of their time and knowledge like that's how this works and i i agree with you guys that people sometimes feel like oh internet marketing game and to be perfectly candid even in the wedding and events industry uh maggie and i've talked about this a great deal people will spend 20 hours a week trying to figure out why their instagram feed isn't generating more engagement and leads but they would never spend that 20 minute, 20 hours a week going out and shaking hands with people and being in touch with people and establishing relationships. Yeah. They feel like social media, social media is a channel, right? It's a way to have your voice be heard and your brand be recognized. It is not the way you build a business. And this is my humble opinion, of course, but Emily and I, we never really looked at those kind of metrics and we built a sustainable, successful business because i mean that was it was basically we use that for brand recognition and if somebody says are you on instagram yes of course we are we're visual artists come take a look at our portfolio confirmation yeah. that we know what we're doing but our our the core of our business was built on the backs of relationships that we've been trying to get together for um <laughs> maggie just commented she's anti-social media <laughs> she yeah, went on yeah, she, i love it <laughs> yeah i mean I, i'm gonna like i agree right and I think social media, and again, it's called social for a reason, but like mm -hmm. people are, are just in search of that me, me, me factor, like give me all the likes, give me all the views. Like they just want it for them. Is that right. social? Like go, like, yes, may, of, I agree 100%. And I think people need to go out there and shake hands. Well, maybe right now, give some fist bumps. Yeah, elbow but, bumps. <laughs> elbow bumps, right? <laughs> but I do think. If you spend those 20 minutes in social media instead of worrying why my my content is not like pulling enough people, spend those 20 minutes commenting on other people, sending DMs to other people, right? Like mm -hmm. actually being social in social media, yeah. using it to engage. You can start really good relationships mm -hmm. through social media, right? Yeah. And I mean, we well, said this event, this example before, but thanks to good engaging in social media and a little bit of leverage we managed to get Todd Brown into the show, right? And and have a, a direct conversation with him that, that was freaking un invaluable That's for us. Probably, right? I mean, it, money value, that could be $50,000 to spend an hour with him, maybe. I don't know. It's when sure. 30, but, like, it, it's, I mean, who knows? Like, just the, the power that these relationships has, and now we have the opportunity that you have with different people that you mm -hmm. network with. But it's that thing. I mean, another example I remember, and, and this is like practical examples. If you're listening, you can actually apply this today and actually see movement um, and positive movement in, in your social profiles. But Lewis House, big influencer, he posted, hey, guys, here's the feed. You guys can network, do, like post here what you guys do. Right. And I'm like, oh, man, why not? Let's actually do it. And then I, and then post what you do and then go into somebody else's comment and ask him a question about what they do. And I, I think this is amazing because mm -hmm. he's utilized his platform to connect with people. And this was at the beginning of COVID where everybody's freaking out. Oh my God, I don't have any business. Right. So I go in there, never, never in my life have engaged with a post of Lewis, go in, put my stuff in there, go through like three different ones, say the same thing that, Oh, that's a pretty interesting things that maybe align with what I do. Amazing relationships happen from there. A client came out of the, that that engagement because she needed something that I offer. And I'm like, okay, perfect. Let's actually, uh, I'm so happy that we actually have a solution for you. Amazing uh, testimonial after that. And mm. we connected with Ryan, invited us onto his show, 
amazing experience too. Now we're connecting and now we have relationships all over the place because of beauty of the network that you mentioned the relationships and the value and and, and you mentioned the sixth degree of the pressure and separation i feel is like now with like the current tools two. is two <laughs> degrees of separation yeah. because you never know who that person knows or might connect you with or yeah. you know just because you're providing value in in a conversation you don't, you don't have to give it for free it's just the time yeah and i you know you guys have done a really really great job of highlighting the difference between sort of the um vanity like sort of surface level superficial use of social media and the way to use it as a, a creator or an extension of relationships right so um if it hadn't been for social media there's it would have been very difficult for us to retain the types of relationships that we started at the large events that we were photographing uh because you know you're, you're in the in the midst of everything but you know, we connected with you guys on social media. So it really was yeah. an opportunity to pull at that thread and allow that relationship to sort of cultivate. Never would have happened before. But if we were so into just, like you said, the vanity and the superficial metrics, then that would have all been lost. So great job kind of, kind of identifying how you can use it as an extension as opposed to just kind of a superficial layer. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. Um, actually, I, I want, I'm gonna add a little action point here for the listeners. Um, cause the, the other day we brought Anthony Murphy, right. And he's, um, an agency owner. He's from Australia. He has a really cool accent and this, cooler, cooler than his, the Hispanic accent. That cooler we than yeah, the Hispanic way, accent. Way cool. <laughs> and, <Agreed. Yep. laughs> and he was like, uh, the action point that he gave was like, guys, every time you open social media, make a post, right? Mm. And I was like, wow, like that's awesome. We related it to habits and yeah. habit building. So guys, if you're listening, go watch the other episode. But I want to add a little something to that, right? Like in this relationship building topic that we, that we have right now, and is when you open social media, make yourself your first action before, you know, liking anything and then checking if your follower count went up or down, whatever. Go and make an intentional comment in somebody's post or answer somebody's story in an intentional way, not, not, yeah. not a copy paste. Hey, what's up? Uh, I, I do this. Do you need any help? No, like an intentional way of, wow, I love the content that you're putting out there. Ask them questions relevant to what they want. Um, at the end of the day, people also love to talk about them, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, that is a fantastic way to build relationships not only that you get to know them and their experience and you never know going back to you know the the first part of the, this podcast you never know what you can learn from from somebody else that is yeah. gonna like elevate your business as well it's interesting that you say that so uh one of the things i found since be uh, since getting involved more in sort of uh an internet and online marketing space in uh in social media right if, if you take traditional networking you're in a room, you walk around, you give each other a, an elbow instead of a handshake, and then you and you engage in conversation about what the other person does, um, how long they've been doing it, things like that, right? And uh, in that space, I want to say there's a lot of times where people um, have a negative feeling when somebody does that on social media. And when you're in the online space, I get lots of messages now from, from different contact points where somebody will friend me. And I'll be like, oh, you know, they, the Luises are are their friends, so I, I kind of have a connection there, so I let them in, and then they send me a message right away, right? Hey, just so great, thanks for connecting, blah 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 blah. Tell me a little bit more what you do. Maybe we can help each other out, right? I feel like if you're if you're so rooted in traditional, that feels like an invasion, and it's so weird. What does this person want from me? What are they trying to get from me? When yeah. if you were to do that in a room, and so if if there's people that are listening now that are that are moving into this space, you have to let that happen, and you have to be generous about responding to them and letting know because that might be the person it's like hey listen i would love to have you on my podcast or i would love to share your message if you, if you you know so it was just interesting because that clicked with me a while ago uh and i just love getting them now I, I write them back right away hey that's so great you know here's what i do what do you do yeah, yeah. no yeah, yeah. Actually, i love sorry real quick um that you know you were talking about like what the universe wanted for you, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, we grew up, or mom always said, everything happens for a reason, <laughs> and mm -hmm. it is always because of the best reason. Hey, if they are messaging you, it, it's for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. Answer back, it, it might take you, what, like 20 seconds? Yep. Answer back, establish mm -hmm. a relationship. What, what if they know someone you've been trying to connect for, I don't know how, how long, right? Mm -hmm. Or what happens 
that's actually the person that might come in and help your business grow. And so yeah. Either way, like, you don't you don't lose anything. I, ju I just want to manage uh, Im imagine that the social scenario of like people talking to you and then you know you're never answering back. What happens if that happens in like in the in the real world, like in a room full of people, right? Yep. You'll see everybody not talking to each other. Like that's just so weird. So yeah. like, mm -hmm. they're gonna come to you, they're gonna introduce themselves. You're probably gonna answer something back. Yeah. It's just <laughs> the same rule applied to social media. That's a, that's so a great way. Like, Can you imagine somebody walks over to you and says, Hey, I'm Luis, uh, this is what I do. What do you do? And you just turn around and walk away from them. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it's it's the digital <laughs> equivalent. Exactly. So talking about action points, Don, we we really want you to share something with the audience. Uh, you know, look back and maybe a lesson that they can implement today. Uh, it could be something that you learned a few years back, something that you're learning right now, something that really means something big to you, but it, it can be executed immediately. You know, we talked about execution, about taking action right now. What's something that people listening or watching um, can actually do today, this afternoon or tomorrow morning? Man, that is you put me right on the spot, but it's a good thing for you. I have been doing this for a very long time and I have lots of opinions on what people should do. So um, when it comes to what I've been doing right now, I think the thing that I learned the most, and this is something I've, I've always done, okay, um, that is not a good thing. I would always <laughs> work something over so long and, and just I'd want it to be perfect, okay? anecdotally in the events industry, there's these documents you'd have to create to send out to the department heads and I would want them to be perfect, right? I would, I would labor over them and toil over them if I didn't have the information yet. And, and what people would say to me is like, listen, dude, just get it out. Let us see it. If you have to make revisions and update, that's okay. It just, we just need to see the preliminary information. And that has been a tenant in my, my life. I think that I was just concerned about what people would think it had to have a a certain level of perfection before I felt like it was ready for, for uh, general consumption. And one of the things I've learned is uh, more is lost by indecision or thinking that something isn't perfect enough than just getting it done. Now, I will say there's a saying, right? Done is better than perfect. That's true. But at the same time, you have to hit a, just a minimum level of professionalism, right? You can't just willy nilly throw it out there and then just, you know, because then I think people look at you like you're, you're not, um, consistent, you're not serious about what you're doing. So the one takeaway I would have is if you're thinking about doing something, identify what the minimum viable level of it is and just do it. Because you can literally convince yourself, uh, I don't look good enough to go Facebook Live right now. I haven't done my hair yet to do a Facebook Live right now. I don't have the perfect words to write that post right now. I don't think that person's gonna write back to me, so I'm not gonna write them right now. You can come up with a million different reasons and so yeah. um, one of the things I have just really been pushing myself to do is if you think you want to do it, make a very simple plan, simple sort of this is the minimum viable uh, level that it can get out there and just do it. Um, because nice. if you don't, <laughs> you, you'll just yeah. convince yourself to not do it forever. Yeah, I, I don't know if you just noticed, but my friend, I looked at each other with smile. Uh, and it's because we love that whole concept of <laughs> pew, pew. Uh, we just love that concept of like minimum viability, I guess, if yes. you can put it in that yes. way, right? And it's funny because uh, Monday we had Jamie Atkinson in the show. Mm -hmm. with oh, man, I love him. He, he, he is so funny. He's so cool, right? He's so funny. Yeah. And he actually has a minimum viable theory of his own as well yeah and when we were talking to him we're like dude <laughs> we came up with our own like minimum bible you know, theory yeah. right so i think it's awesome that you mentioned that and i and i love it because i mean i was a victim of <laughs> perfectionism <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna lie like i didn't publish for again three years because i wanted it to look the, the best right i wanted mm -hmm. the best camera the best light the best to mic, his standards anything, to my standards right to and his standards, yeah. I, I think honestly for me that was just me putting an excuse on uh, on being afraid right like mm -hmm. i'm afraid of taking action and maybe putting myself out there and getting judged by people which is totally awesome actually you know bring it on mm -hmm. but it's like yeah, I, I don't know. I love it. Thank you so much yeah, for sharing that. Thanks for sharing. That. And <laughs> yeah. you know, we we cannot stress enough on that on that point. We've done it in several episodes. So if you're listening, please, guys, go ahead. If you're still thinking about 
you know, taking action and, and put it out there, whatever you're doing, just do it, receive feedback, learn from it, improve it, do it again. You're, you're yeah. only going to go up and get better. At it. And, you know, same thing happened with the conversation with Todd Brown, 20 years. And he said when he started, those cassette tapes were horrible. And then he took action, he learned, and then he moved forward again and executed. So go ahead. Thank you, Don, for like sharing that point of view. Amazing. I want to add something to that because I, I, I'm new yeah. in this space. And some of the people that you've been talking to have been doing this successfully for decades. And, and that's, um, that's aspirational and it's motivational. I want to bring it down a level and let people know yeah. that like, I literally have been creating content for, at this moment, three and a half months maybe. Okay. And I'm not, I'm not doing it right probably according to some people's standards, but here's the deal. Um, I was one of the people that was, every time people would say like, you just have to, you have to create content. You have to have your own platform. You have to, have to, have to. I was so resistant to it. And I'll tell you, I did it a few times. It was uncomfortable. I did it a few more times. It was less uncomfortable. As I'm doing it now, I really actually like it. Okay. And so if you're resistant to it, not only because you think it's just not perfect yet, but you think it's not for you, you think you're not going to enjoy it. I want to encourage you all to set maybe a reasonable number of times, call it maybe five, because you can count that on one hand, do it five times. And I'll bet you if you don't overcomplicate it and you follow this principle of just set a minimum viable uh, um, amount of, of professionalism to get it out. I'll bet you after five times, you'll be like, I don't know how I wasn't doing this before. I look forward to the conversations I have with other people. And I look forward to the feedback that it helps other people. So um, that that's one thing from somebody who's a newbie, somebody who thought I would never be a content creator. Here I am creating content and enjoying it. So, Hey, uh, you're you. doing an amazing job. I, I, I'm telling you, I'll be like, man, Don, you've been doing this interviews for like 10 years. You're <laughs> so, so good. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, and I actually want to, you know, relay what you just said to, it's a super cliche analogy, but is, you know, the baby walking one, you know, they get up, they fall, they get up, they fall, they get up, they fall, but they just keep trying. Mm -hmm. They don't care if they fall or not. And eventually, you know, they're walking and one is chasing them and they, they don't stop ever, you know? So... Yeah. And it's hard to believe you never didn't walk, right? It's it's hard to look back and think. I mean, I've been walking my whole life, right? And and yeah. and if you look back at some of those videos, uh, and I learned this from watching Russell and a handful of other people, right? They'll show their videos. Peng Jun's first video. I don't know if you guys had the pleasure of seeing oh, that. Man. So I, mean, I mean, he's obviously he's one of the heavy hitters in the game right now. He's ex he's exceptional. And then you look back yeah. when he was learning, and it's so cool to have that persistent yeah. memory and being able to look back and be like, man, I can't believe I was ever sort of that green. So it's just a, it's a good way to look back and see how far you've come. I, I love that. Cause you said, I can't believe how far I've come. Right. And I think that right there, I don't, I don't want people to miss this. It's not other people saying, wow, how far has he come? It doesn't matter what, what other people think at the end of the day, right? Like you are part of yourself for taking action and growing mm -hmm. and, and getting to where you are actually like i i just love that because that's how you just explained in a few words how i feel and i'm sure my brother might feel this way too but i see myself three months from now four four months ago and i'm like wow like it's the change is massive, massive. right mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm proud of myself of us accomplishing that so thank you so much for sharing that yeah i think that i answers perfectly the question that i was gonna ask next which is like where will you be without publishing you know and uh kind of answer there if you want to go dive in a little deeper awesome but you know you 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 just like have grown so much according to what you said and you're very proud of what you have achieved and you can't wait to to see this thing like evolve which is exciting yeah. right like we can't wait to see we can't wait to see where it's going yeah it's well, exciting to Thanks for the support. Like, I, it, you know, it's it's hard to imagine that you have a group of people that are sort of hanging on your next word or waiting to see what you do next. And and um, as entrepreneurs and business folks, we don't always look up that often, right? Like we're down, we're head down, driving through. Yeah. And so it's really great to take a minute and, and thank you for the encouragement. I'd say the only other thing I'd say about where would I be if I wasn't doing content or publishing is I'd be much less further along, not even necessarily because I wouldn't be publishing, the, in my opinion, the worst thing that I could possibly do is make a promise that I don't keep. 
mm-hmm. and, or, or not deliver on a promise. And so when I would say to people like, hey, I'm going to start doing this weekly or, hey, I'm going to come up with a guest about such and such because I think it's really important. Um, you know, my first interview is with Ayelet Shipley, who I'm sure you all know from from um, yeah. Tom's yeah. daughter and, and from that world. But uh, I did that because I kept hearing from people I was talking to, more one to one or small group, about anxiety, about trauma, about what we're going through. And I was like, "All right." I literally, I forced myself to have a conversation, thinking I wasn't going to be the guy that did conversations or podcast interviews and things like that. And when I was done with it, the feedback I got was like, "You need to keep doing this." And so basically to answer your question, uh, long story long, accountability is everything. And so to have an audience that is looking at you and saying like, I can't wait till your thing next week, I'm not willing to to let them down. So I'll do whatever it takes to find the right guest, find the right topic, plan for it, prep for it, and then have it. So um, that is, that's the encouragement and the accountability we need to to move forward. I love it. I love it. You just hit a, a home run since we're soccer fans i'm gonna say you just score a golazo oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah but you just, just nailed it honestly Dude, that was awesome uh donnie has been an absolute pleasure having you with us don't don't leave yet where can we where can we find you where can people connect with you if they are yeah, digging so easy community? so oh, easy yeah. to find me i am literally trying to wallpaper the world uh i'm on all the social media channels uh at don mamoni Uh, and um, I have my website is donmamoni.com. So people can sign up for the newsletter there. I do a Zoom every Monday at 10 a.m. for people that want to pop in and have a chat, talk about the state of the world that they need help with. Um, and then I'll have some other resources coming out soon. So yeah, they can find me pretty easily or through you. Yeah. You guys know how to get a hold of me. Yes, <laughs> yes. They can send a, send us a DM like, hey guys, what's up? Uh, I need done and I perfect. We'll send yeah, it. We'll send it your way. Guys. By the way, uh, if you are debating on that call at 10 a.m. is amazing. I've been there a couple of times mm-hmm. and uh, it's so cool. You meet so many people from different backgrounds mm-hmm. and then uh, it's literally an open mic and zero judgment zone where hey, you can share your b- stuff. Building the relationships. Love it. Uh, it, has, it has been yeah. so great. So be- be- before we go, before we go, Don, I, ready. I, I must <laughs> confess, Dude, I, I, I always pronounce pronounce your your name the wrong way so yeah. i was always saying mamon 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 yeah, Mamone, oh, yeah. Well, man. That, makes, that makes more sense it makes more sense in yeah. spanish culture yeah and it's But, in italy they put the e on the end they put the vowel on the end yeah i, I like it better mamoni it's yeah but you do I, I just yeah. want just want to say I knew it the whole time. I was saying it right. <laughs> the, right way. Well, I've I've been called far worse uh, in either way, so it's okay. <laughs> It's all good. Well, with that being said, guys, thank you so much for uh, staying with us the whole way. Please don't forget to subscribe. Hit smash that subscribe button and follow us on social media at the Peace Rose Co. That's right, guys. And if you found this episode impactful, which I am sure you did, don't forget to share it and and leave a five-star review. See ya. Bye. All right. awesome. We're still on Facebook. Thank you guys on Facebook. If you're still here, comment, thumbs up, anything, hashtag we're here, hashtag we love done. And uh, if you have any questions, drop them in there. We're going to hang out for maybe two more minutes in here. Done. Dude, thank you so much. This was yeah, an absolute was awesome. pleasure. You guys are fun. so much fun. Like some interviews feel like they're a little bit more of a slog just because they're a little bit more sedate. You guys have energy. It's great. Form and function okay. together. <laughs> Ah, yeah. we're, we're gonna have to do another episode with you and Emily. Yes. Oh my gosh, that would be so great. That would be. That would be awesome. It's so, funny because um, when we talk, she's the interjector. Like I'm talking and talking, I'm talking, and when she interjects, like the whole thing goes quiet because we know she's gonna say something earth shattering. Like she, she just interjects with the perfect thing. <laughs> you were gold. The yeah. energy just. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's just focused. I love it. So before we leave the Facebook Live, we got to do the traditional uh, selfie that we do with all the guests let's because we're going to plaster the wall with uh, all the pictures. Yeah, the so idea. just make sure that uh, we smile all together and then count of three, right? Here we go. One, two, three. I say smile. Like opening, opening my mouth. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> all right, guys. Facebook, see you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye, oh, by the way, tomorrow, if you're still here, oh, who's coming yeah. tomorrow? Me, 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 Catherine Jones. Jones. Oh, so no easy. way. Oh, I opened for <laughs> Catherine Jones. I am like, what? That's amazing. Did. I did. I, I opened for Catherine Jones. I'm going to tell people that. Oh, there's just one time. 
I open for cash. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're stoked. I think it's tomorrow. Let me just confirm the time here. She actually just sent all her info, which is yeah. exciting. Um, she's going to be live at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. So, Perfect. John, you're obviously welcome to join. Yeah. It's, it's supposed to be a conversation. No pressure, yeah. Fonzie. She, she's a lot of fun. <laughs> she, she's like, no pressure, Fonzie. Bye, <laughs> <laughs> right, Facebook. See you later. Yes, Facebook. <laughs> He's